Back in Manchester 2002, of 180 kilos, he will hold that record for another four years until the next Commonwealth Games weightlifting super heavyweight class in Brisbane, and that's 2018. From Singapore, first attempt. With the following of the ingredients. Yeah, good. So, Scott Wong onto the stage here, 165 kilos. First attempt in the clean and jerk, and in the first part, a new personal best at 135. And now trying to add 165 kilos to it. Very patient, steadied himself very well. Wasn't able to get that bar into the proper position. Well, the next man who should come in, Dunga Williams for Nigeria, has asked for 142. Having a look at this, 142 kilos, which failed and he's looking for 170. So there isn't really anybody around this weight that wants to come in at this stage. That jerk was just a little too far forward. You need to have your ears in front of your arms so that the bar is over your center of gravity. Coach is giving him some cues to fix that, probably exactly that. Call that sometimes a Superman jerk where your arms are out in front where you can almost see them. Yeah, 135 kilos in the first half of the competition for this man represented a 10 kilo increase from the 125 that he set last November. And this is a perfect example of a, a young lifter at 23 making rapid progress. Yes, and you know, this is a great place to collect experience as well. Commonwealth Games, you know, four years from now, he could really be a contender. His coach wants him to do that clean a little bit faster as well. Yeah, I think they need to get out on stage, yes. They've got 45 seconds left, so they couldn't spend any more time debating it. Now he's got to get out and do it. That's right. It's an important part of the planning because you can spend too much time backstage and then everything's a bit rushed when you come out on the platform. 30 second buzzer has just gone. So this is to repair 165 kilos. Give himself a total of 300. That would be a new total, of course, for him. Better clean. Oh, as a press out. Uh, he wouldn't have made it. I just felt, I don't know about you, that it just needed to be a little bit more fire, a little bit more commitment in that jerk. Yes, he definitely had the power for it. Actually, I think the reason he got that press out is it went so explosively overhead that it kind of gave it a little bit of bounce back in that elbow. See, he did get full extension and then it bounced back and then his weight was shifted forward and there was no chance of holding on. But a much better and clean than that first one. Yeah, and he finds himself in a very uncomfortable position as a result of this. Now, as I think everybody knows by this stage of the Commonwealth Games Weightlifting Championships, that if you don't get a good snatch attempt and you don't get a good clean jerk attempt, 
you don't get a total. If you don't get a total, you don't get a ranking, and you feel pretty flat at the end of the day. That's right. Definitely want to go out of this competition with a total on the board so that you can actually have a ranking rather than the dude did not finish. That's a rough way to end any championships, let alone the Commonwealth Games. So Scott just trying to get his breath back, sort out his respiration. You see, if any tightens on his belt, that just makes it a little harder. Yes. So the reason that athletes wear belts in weightlifting is really to give something to push against. It's not to replace the strength in your back, it's really so that you can bear down and hold your core very tight. So 165 for the third time of asking for the medical student based out of Manchester. The man who switched from discus throwing to weightlifting. The man who slipped his disc last February. So just outside the top 20 in the World Championships last year when he totaled up 275. If he does this, he not only saves the day, his total is 25 kilos to the good. That's quite something. Best clean so far. Has to be really strong and certain with conviction. No, I'm sorry. There was a press out on that right arm. It's a two to one majority against him. He sure fought for it. And you know, that's hard when their audience is going crazy like that. His coach was trying to get them to be quiet, but it's just so innate to want to cheer someone on when they have the chips against them like this. Did such a good job of holding on to the very last possible moment. Watch that right arm. There it is as he started to move around. And just at this moment in time, he has a horrible feeling of emptiness. What can I say? He's only 23. I hope he comes back four years hence, wiser and stronger. All right. Here we go. You don't really know what to expect from this man in the clean and jerk. So Dunga Williams, 170 kilos. Only one good attempt in the snatch. 305 for the lead. Uncertainty, hesitation. That jerk is the best of all the lifts I've seen him do. Really great timing in the dip. He's nice and slow and controlled and great drive overhead. The clean, however, when we watch this clean again, I'd like to see how high he starts with his hips. He definitely is a lot more back dominant than most lifters we see here. So here is Daniel Namani from Nui. He did a better, a bit better than Dunga Williams in the first half of the competition. Actually, 10 kilos difference. So if he gets this, he takes the lead, goes to 315. He's really feeding off the energy in this room right now. Like so many of the sportsmen and women who come from Nui, actually at this moment in time, home is Auckland in New Zealand. Very close association between Nui and New Zealand. Just his feet to get in a better, more powerful position for that jerk, and it sure pays off. He can go further. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, Daniel's been coaching all week, and I just really wonder how, as a coach, you feel that energy when the athlete's out on the stage. It must really get you excited to have your turn out there soaking it up. It's a particularly noticeable move by the Oceanic lifters that they also taking on a coaching responsibility 
at these games. I think it's quite interesting that they do that. And I just wonder whether that will become a bit infectious in other parts of the world as well. Yeah, I'd like to see that because, as we keep saying, there's just so much strategy involved in this game. And you don't want to be thrown off the deep end and only learn the game once you've coached an athlete to that level. It's really great to be in there and understand it right from the get-go. So Lewis Chua for Singapore. Let's hope he has a bit more fortune than his teammate. Now, he got 133 kilos successfully in the first half. So he's coming out. This would be 208 for, uh, sorry, 308 for second place. But more importantly, he'll have a total. So Lewis Chua, only 22 years of age. Excellent. That is so light for him. I'd like to see a 10 kilo jump from there. No problems at all. So, Louis has a sister that competed already earlier this week, came six in the 69 kilo class. His father is the manager holding the towel for him, encouraging him. You know, there's two families here, Apolongi and Louis. There's no one else on the team. Nobody here as part of Team Samoa hasn't brought a relative. It's pretty awesome. So we're at the skirmishing stage at the moment. This is Lawatiti Louis, 175 to go with the 140 from the first part of the competition. 315, challenging the man from Nui for the lead, which he'll get by virtue of his lighter body weight, if... That was a rough first attempt, but you know, again, it's so hard to control the nerves and fear involved in getting that first lift. I think we can expect a more solid second attempt from Louis. So, Samoa leads Nui. Off balance and the clean, and then we see his feet are very wide in his start position for the jerk. So hard to generate force when your feet are that wide. You really want them between armpit and shoulder width. Just the same, he was able to get this jerk overhead. Like I say, the next one will be cleaner and I'm sure a lot easier. So, Dunga Williams for Nigeria on. Second attempt, put the bar up five kilos. Working to his own plan here, this would take him to 310 and would pop him up for, from fourth to third for the moment. Left the bar in front, hips went behind, and actually he was a long way from getting that. Yeah, he didn't set up for his jerk in a way that would have given him a, a very good shot of being successful. His coach is giving him some technical feedback there. See, clean isn't too bad at all. Then the feet doesn't really bring them into the best position and doesn't really adjust and give himself that patient weight before driving hard, throwing the weight overhead. Question here for the Nigerians. Should they uh, put a kilo on, buy him a little bit more time for this third attempt? Because he's on 176. Namani of Nui has posted 176 for his third attempt, so he might gain a little time, but doesn't look like it the way they're Selling up here. There is one more coach in this team, and I think they may be at the table. Yeah, 
Well, 175 still there. <laughs> look at the new e coaches. They look after Daniel Lamani, and he's on 176. So they were they were right there, ready to strike with a new weight increase. Had the Nigerians decided to push him up. That's right, and it's a tough job being a coach because you don't want to alert your athlete to the fact that they may be next if they might, may not be next. We're really cr controlling emotions. You've got to turn it on and off really quick in this game. Let's see if he can turn it on for this clean and jerk. So this to go to 310 and to give him a 50% success rate. That was his hardest clean. This is not going to make it easy for him in the jerk portion. He's really got to set himself up. Hand adjustment. It's better than his last setup. Not quite stable. <laughs> oh, looks like he hurt his knee in the dip there. Yeah. I just wonder whether, so, uh, wonder whether it was uh, also cramped, but it looks like it's the knee. And both doctors in very quickly. They're covering up the stage just to give the athletes some privacy here. We have doctors that we introduce you to at the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, they're going to attend towards our athletes. In the meantime, so this is the first time we've seen anything really traumatic in these games. You can see the clean wasn't easy. He was getting into a good position to set up. And here we see he's going to go for the drive. In that dip phase, he feels quite a bit of pain. Well, the worst injury you can ever have with a knee is a cruciate knee ligament. But when that happens, with no disrespect to anybody, uh, you usually hear a big scream because that is just one of the most painful injuries. I don't... It's difficult to tell, but hopefully it's nothing as serious as that. It's, no matter what it is, it's not a good way to end your Commonwealth Games experience. That's a rough day for him. Hopefully he'll be able to enjoy Glasgow just the same. Traveling is one of his favorite things, so I'm really hoping that he can still get out and enjoy the rest of his games experience in the city. Well, sadly, he finishes his challenge. This is for uh, but Daniel Lamani. Does have a total. That's right, he does have a total. That is something to be proud of. And as you said earlier, he's very close to a 105. So maybe we'll see him in the future down in that lighter weight class. Uh, finishes on 305. And as I said, we didn't really get any reliable stats. So we can't really tell what that was in terms of his previous performances. But on we move with a six kilo increase here for the man from Nui. And this is to take him to 321, which will put him back in the lead on this, his second attempt. So Daniel Namani. Does have this awkward stance. He's really good at being patient and getting set up how he wants, though. And does it ever work for him in the jerk? He is harnessing the power of this crowd today. Yeah, yeah and I think that's really important that he's enjoying himself. You know. So he's got a 321. He's got a much bigger personal best, but what's important is that he's lifting to his plan, and that's the fourth success out of five. It's really fun to come out knowing you have only one lift left, and you can make it another awesome one and get that crowd behind you, just like his coaches are behind him right there. Look at that celebration. That's awesome. Yeah. There's a change. 
So 181 kilograms announces the appearance of the man in your picture there, the champion of the Commonwealth back in 2006, Chris Ray. And you can see Chris Ray when that announce, announcement for 181 came, he looked back a little confused because he had in fact asked for 180. So athletes definitely are aware of what they're lifting when they come out here. The coaches are the ones making the decisions putting those lifts in at the marshals table, but the athletes are very much aware of what numbers they're coming out to hit here. So this is for 336. His entry total as a guide was posted at 340. So this is only his first attempt. So you can see that with two attempts after this, given that he does not have any problems with this bar, this sign, he can go much, much further. Maybe he might put himself into the fight for the bronze medal. What a high catch. Such a solid jerk. Wondering if that high catch has something to do with that leg pain we saw earlier after the snatch. Whatever happens, if he does want to get into the mix for a medal, he's now going to have to take some big risks, some big leaps here. I, I think he needs to basically get as close as he can to 360 to have a real chance of a medal. Um, and if he does and one or two fail, like we saw last night, suddenly Mr Evans of England ends up with a bronze medal. I mean, Mr. Watson, I should say. <laughs> so, Lautiti Louis, 181 kilos on the very first attempt. Such strength coming out of that deep position, but again, very wide feet in the jerk. No problems, though. Yeah, that takes him to 321. Now, of course, body weight to 130. He has been challenging the man from Nui. And the man from Nui is heavier, so he goes up into second. And Namani of Nui goes down to third. Chris Ray continues to have the advantage. Some big opening clean and jerks posted here. Kovalatse, Canada, 215. Damon Kelly, the defending champion, 200. Kaminda Vangura, also of Canada, 185. Won't be too long till we see him. And then, of course, Ite Detenamo, 210 kilos. Ite, the Commonwealth Games overall record holder. Ite actually owns all the Commonwealth records. These records can only be broken in the Commonwealth Games, but in the Commonwealth records, those can be broken at any time in a multitude of championships. And Ite owns all of those, 184, 229, 413 for the total. Mind you, he did do them away back in May 2011 in hot and steamy Darwin. I think we can expect to see pretty spectacular left here. He's got a little note for himself there, taped onto yeah. his shoes. Yes, it's hard work. Or should we say work hard? I'm pretty sure the other one says fast. Yeah. Faith. Uh -huh. Well, he's uh -huh. both fast and faithful here. So, five kilos on. Takes him to 326 if he gets this. The crowd is going wild. And what, what a save. Close. Yeah, well, he's really got into the crowd and they've now responded to him. They really like his personality, but he's stuck on 321. But the man from Newey has enjoyed himself and the audience here in the Clyde Auditorium have certainly enjoyed him. What 
a spectacular attempt to save that bar, but you know, nothing feels as amazing as having the crowd behind you when the weight's on your shoulders like this. He now trolls. look at this, as he goes forward there, you can see that bar go forward and he can't go with it and stay under it. No, it's very hard. You can keep up the pace, but you can't hold your arms overhead and straight without a lockout when you've got weights like that and you're running around the platform. Five men yet to start, and next man up is going to be Luis Chua, the bar going to 182 kilos. So this would represent a seven kilo increase. Would take him to 315 and would take him into... 315 would take him into third place. While we wait for our athlete to come out, no, he would stay fourth, actually, because we've got two men on 321. So he would stay fourth, but enhance his position with this second attempt and with one more to come. It's been a while since he's been out here. Hope he isn't cooled off from that weight and that he can use that spectacular technique of his. So he's already got a personal best total by a kilo, so... This is to go that much further. Seven kilos to be respected. Wow, it's so difficult standing up when you get into that dead stop position. But he's got no problems when he goes overhead. No problems at all. And... So 308 converts to 315, but stays fourth at the moment. Haven't quite, Ginny, got into the real big fight here for the medals. We're just sort of just simmering under the surface. That's right. We've still. It's going to come down to the last lifts for all of these lifters. So there is a battle coming for sure. So, the bar going up to 185 kilos for one of the men who have yet to start, and in this case it's Parminda Fangura for uh, Canada, 185 to go with the 150 kilos that he collected in the first half of the competition. So, effectively, 335. Now, worth remembering that Chris Ray of Australia's on 336 so this will take him up into second place with his first attempt but most importantly it will give him a total and that's something he didn't leave delhi with so he's really keen to get this first lift yes. buzzer coming up for 30 seconds <laughs> but no problem with the clean very smooth Excellent timing on that jerk. Yeah, sigh of relief. So we're probably going to see actually more red lights as these weights go up just because of the oscillation of the bar. It bends so much with these big weights. So really, you'll see the athletes as they lock out, they'll get kicked back, they'll unlock, there'll be movement in their out shoulders as well. So you can anticipate more difficulty getting solid lockouts from here on in. So the bar still on 185 kilos for the appearance of Gordon Shaw for South Africa. Now he had 160 from the snatch phase, only got one out of three, but this would put him into the outright lead. Oh, well. Knee touch with the elbow. Yeah. Wouldn't be the same competition without a knee touch, would it? Yes, we've seen a lot of that. And you know what? He gets really low. That's one of the problems with getting really low is that it's hard to stay completely upright and keep those elbows high. We'll watch it here. So 
the weight just slid down his shoulders a bit. He had caught it high, just needed to keep those elbows high, and that wouldn't have happened. There's not many clean and jerks to go. That will be the end of the Wakefield Commonwealth game. So please just shout and scream and clap and whistle as much as you possibly can for each of our athletes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, change 185 kilograms. Well, just a bit of news now about Dunga Williams from Nigeria, who had that very unfortunate uh, knee injury. Um, they've strapped him up and they've taken him off to the medical centre in the village and he'll be thoroughly checked out there. But we just hope that it's nothing too serious. But of course, they'll err on the side of cushion. So Gordon Shaw has to come out again. Now, my worry for this guy is that, you know, he only got one out of three. Now, this would take him up to, what, 345, so it would put him in the lead, but these misses are becoming expensive. Much better clean. He corrected that, did not let it slide down at all. That was a great comeback. It is, and maybe I ought to temper the last comment with the fact that he is only 20 and he's a junior African champion so his competition experience is limited he went to the junior worlds this year as well here you can see the second phase gets it onto the shoulders there and then the chuck overhead but quite strong very strong you know the junior worlds weren't that long ago so Maybe he's feeling a little fatigued from all of this international travel from coming all the way from South Africa. Didn't get a total in the junior world, so this is much better. And now, Laotiti Louis for Samoa. This is his third and final attempt. It would be five out of six. A four kilo increase to take him to 325. So oh, gutsy. Never, no. That bar was not moving very fast at all. He managed to get it to his hips, although it was slow, and throw himself under the bar just the same. And what a fight in that catch position. But he's like Gordon Shaw, he's young, he's 18. His previous best was 298. He's achieved 321. That's 33 kilos better in competition. Such a fighter. <laughs> Those bars you gotta let go of because that's a high risk for injury when it's spinning like that. But you know what? All of that speed came from the hips at the end, and he was so brave to throw himself under that clean. Lewis Chua now to come out. And again, limited increase here. Just three kilos, to, which would take him to 380. But just a reminder that. Kelly of Australia, Kobalatsi of Canada, Jokazade of Wales, and Detanamo of Nauru. None of them have yet started. So, Lewis Chua. Looks as if he's having a bit of fun out here. He'd have never heard noise like this before at a weight competition. Very few people have had the pleasure of lifting in front of a crowd like this. That was the three extra kilos that really just put him over the edge. Nonetheless, he's finished up on the day. Lewis Stewart on, just checking here, finishes on 3.15. And 3.15 still represents an improvement by eight kilos over anything that he's done in a competition before. So there are some positives he'll take out of this. Oh, definitely, and I think he can be really proud of that last lift he had before. Sometimes you've given it everything into that lift. It's really hard to reproduce in the third lift. Well, Paulo Doogie Williams, we understand that he's got a quadricep rupture, tendon rupture, which sounds really nasty. Jeannie, it is rather nasty. They've taken him off to accidents and emergency. He'll get the best treatment there, but it's, a long-term repair. It is a long-term repair. 
Now, back to the present now. And Chris Ray got a score on the board with 180. Now coming in for a six kilo increase. And this is where he gets serious to see whether he could grab another Commonwealth Games medal. Remember, he got one in Kuala Lumpur in 98. He won the title in 2006. He's just on the edge here. And again, he's got that right knee problem that appeared in the snatch phase. Yes, he was definitely cleaning differently on that first lift to avoid going into the squat position. Yeah. There's a lot of things that could I be... Think, I think he's saying that's it. I think he realises, along with Yurik Sarkassian there, that taking a third attempt at this stage would be foolish. And all we can say is live to fight another day. That's right. You have to think long-term as well as chasing that medal onto the podium. Well, we're Health is important as well. Because these are big guys, he's 34, but Kobalatse of Canada here in this competition is 38. So fight another day, try and qualify four years hence That's in right. Brisbane. Exactly, home crowd, save it for that day. Chris has had knee surgery before, so he definitely knows when it's time to push and when it's time to recover. So one by one, the field is being reduced to those who have a chance for a medal. Damon Kelly, George Kobalatze of Australia and Canada. And the next man to come out is going to be the Canadian, Paminda Fangura. He's posted 190 for his second attempt. But we also have to factor in Jokazade for 195. Wales and also Detenamo, 210, the heaviest, the second heaviest opening total. So Gordon Shaw coming on first off at 190. And that's so because uh, Bangura put the bar to 191. So Gordon Shaw to finish off his first Commonwealth Games. And this would be for a 350 total. Best clean of the day with that timing there. First lift, that was very, very solid and straightforward. You know, it's really hard to come back from a competition where you've bombed out and just a month later, come onto a stage like this and compete. But he may have only made three out of six, but when you look at what the 20-year-old has achieved, 310 was his previous best. He's actually notched up 350 kilos by the improvements he's made in the snatch phase and now in the clean and jerk. So that is something he'll take back to Africa and work with for the future. So now we go back to Canada. And the situation on the leading board, of course, is that 350 leads the way ahead of the 336 at the moment of Christopher Ray, but he's not going to take any further part. In third place, this man on 335. Simple clean. Three forty one. Not, not too much trouble with that jerk. Got a little bit of spinning happening, but he didn't seem to have any problems getting it under control. So he stays in second place, but creeps ever close. He's got one more attempt to come. So he's moved up third to second now, Pangaris. So, Jokazade on 196. I think he's going to be the next guy in, and he really needs to make the first attempt if he's going to have a shout of the bronze medals, because when he comes in at 196, he's facing athletes who, well, 
Jokazada is going to be the next man in because Parminda Angulo and the Canadian coaches have decided that they're going up five kilos. That will be his third attempt. This is the Welshman's first attempt, so that's why he's right in now. So 196 kilos on the bar. And that's to go with the 165 snatch that he got in the first part of the competition. So this will be for 361 to put him directly into first place. Talk about giant strides. Very worried that his costume oh, right. hasn't been zipped in the back. Not sure that would have affected his lift, but why take any risks? His coach is getting in trouble, though. You're not allowed out on the field of play there onto the stage. So, first attempt. No troubles there. What a lift. I'm really curious to see where he's going with this, David. You know, in the clean and jerk, the grip he takes because he's so tall, six feet seven, is almost as wide, I think maybe even as wide as some of the girls we see in the 48 kilograms doing the snatch lift. But well, the reality is he's only one of five men who are very much alive in this finale. Yes, very explosive. But it's a bit more like raw power. Yes, I mean, he's been talent ID'd for various sports, so clearly there's some genetic ability there. But he works very, very hard to get those big numbers. So the bar goes up to 200 kilos, and it's going to be Damon Kelly. Now, Damon Kelly, the defending champion, a very calculated set of attempts in the snatch phase 164 168 171 but unsurprisingly he's just put this up to 203 this is where he wants to make his mark and at 203 he is actually seven kilos shy of detenamamo and also 12 kilos shy of kobalatse who if those figures are correct must be feeling pretty confident backstage. If successful, he moves up from second to first. So that brings back the other Canadian, Parminda Fangura, and he's put the bar to 201. And uh, there's only 30 seconds now for him They're to get really... out there. They're in trouble here because this is a 10 kilo increase, and I, I, I think they need to get moving. He's got to go he's straight right. to the bar. No choking up, straight to the bar. He's got to get that belt done up, and he's got to be a kamikaze right now, so you know what? A little time pressure might really help him. Right. Ten seconds. He's just looked at the clock. He knows where he is. He's it's counting him. down. Here we go. And that was too late. Not enough time. He just was never settled. Bad management. Well, also a very gutsy move. A 10 kilo jump between the second and third. I'm not sure what he's done in training lately, but 201 is not a lightweight for Harm from Canada. So very bold, but you know what? There's a medal on the line, and maybe he thought he could convince his heart and mind once he stepped onto the platform. So Kobalatz is sitting on 215. So, Damon Kelly. <laughs> 374, that's what he's looking at. If you can achieve this, it will be four out of four. And now you can see the maturity of this man. In the snatch phase, you know, he was on and off like a rabbit here much more patience bigger weights taking his time very professional yeah and that was only two, 203 so you can see here how he's just throwing that weight around and it's no surprise because he does have the commonwealth record at 221 so this is quite a bit lower but you know still as we say a lot of pressure down before the weight is loaded to what he would like to be at someone else 
can't lift that weight and then he can d and then he decides that he wants to try it he has to make that decision before the bar gets to that weight and that is key yeah very rarely do you see anybody even a super heavyweight taking 14 extra kilos and what worries me is in a sense i feel that he might have the power but you see it's a little bit like a, a young giraffe with his legs yes his jerk he has got a little bit of technical issues with that back foot he's putting his back foot flat i noticed as well and that is shifting his balance forward and that could be what gets him with a weight like 220. and damon kelly's put the bar up to 212 for his second attempt so this is now a nine kilo increase so damon's in the lead and now this is where the Oshies, the Aussies, i should say are on the drive for home because what they really want to do here they see the top probably Detenamo as their biggest threat, although you can't rule out Kobaladze, because what on earth are they playing at in the Canadian camp? You they're, know, at some point he's got to come out and live to get that total. What they're playing at is George has a wicked clean and jerk, and they're looking to use it as their secret weapon. So Damon with a minute now needs to get moving. Here comes Yurik. He's well aware of what his boy has in terms of time. If he gets there with about 38, 40 seconds, he's fine. Tightening that belt. One thing that Damon's not gonna be liking right now is that no one else has come out for a lift. He's really playing it conservative, but he still has one attempt that he can save for later if he needs it to be a lot more aggressive. Uh, that could be defining. He may want to go up anyways, just to see what he needs to stay in the game. If he stays at 212 and George comes out at a successful 12, 215, he has no shot anymore for the podium. You know, he's got a gold and silver, he has, but he hasn't got a bronze. Detinamo's got a bronze and silver, but hasn't got a gold. Yeah, I don't think that Damo's looking to complete the set today. I think he wants nothing but gold. All right, now, Zocazada has come down to 212. But, uh, now, shouting, he had 220s come down. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is 16 kilos. It's actually 18 kilos. Wow. What is it? It's yeah. big math. We're not used to this much mathematics when we're calculating first to second attempt. He went from 196 got, to 212. Uh, he, got, he got four. Four up to two, and then four and 12 is 16. Did I? Oh, man. I just like to over dramatize everything. I'm sorry. Heck, if he does this, can he clean it? Oh my goodness gracious me. He's got to put some weight into that back foot. That's what we were highlighting. We thought he could do the first part, but. Just has to shift that heel in the back off the ground, put some weight into his toes and bend that knee and he can shift his weight equally across both feet. Now his dodgy situation, if you see what I mean, is that you've got, still got Damon Kelly, Jokazade is in second place, Kobalatsi of Canada hasn't started and neither has Detonamo. So at the moment, you, you know, unless on the next attempt he manages this, he could end up in fourth place. That's right, he really needs this lift. And nobody's gonna be coming in at this weight, I don't think. I don't think uh, anyone's actually gonna attempt this. I think Demo will be going up. Well, 377 kilos for Jokazade. Although, when you look at the previous best for Jokazade in the Junior World Championships last year, 173, 202, 375. 
we're, we're just looking on the snowball one because uh, they're not here. Uh, it's the order of lifting that might be changing. Yes, it's very weird that Darius has been called out at 2.12 when he's on a third attempt following himself. If, K if Damon Kelly actually does want 2.12, it should be him right now. So this is why there is a pause in the competition. Either way, Darius is in an advantage position because the clock has not actually stopped on him if he is, in fact, the next lifter at 2.12 and Damon moves up. Could they, could they put it up to 2.13? For... No, this Damon is a scoreboard no. error right now. Yeah. So... Well, you're right, it so, should be uh, Damon to come out to if it's going to be 212. So, if we assume, and it is only an assumption, that Kobalatse and Detenamo are going into a head head duel, then Jokazade here for Wales and Kelly are battling for bronze. It's really working out well for Darius, who's clearly ripped some calluses on his thumbs and he looks to be bleeding quite a bit from the hand. So this is giving us some extra time to tape up because, you know, everything has to be perfect when you come out to lift. You don't want to be feeling pain in your hands when you're trying to lift 212 kilos over your head. From Australia, third attempt. Well, they're the will be desperately up. trying to get some They have fixed protection. the order in the lift as well here, so this is changing things up a bit. Yeah, it's just giving him a, about two minutes okay, to sort his hands out. I thought so Kelly would go up. I'll tell you why, because the Aussies would have a look at what's going on with the Welshman, and they'd say, come on, let's force him in. And... So they're going to change it. Now the Welsh have got to decide what they do. Are they going to go up to 2.13 and then recreate what happened before? All the time this is actually theoretically what, what are the Welsh going to do? Well, they're changing it looks like because he's still got 50 seconds left and they do have the power to do that. Oh, no well, it doesn't look like, No, they're going for it. So he's only, see the clock was already counting down and he's only got 40 seconds. So it's the second phase. Can but he shift some weight back into that back foot? This is the big question right now. Yeah! Now, I think all that's been going on backstage and just got into him there and as it is, he is in the silver medal position. Damon Kelly leads at the moment. All that Jokazade can do is to watch and wait. Now, Ben Watson, remember Ben Watson last night for England? He thought that all was lost. 15 minutes later, he was the bronze medalist. That's right. Now, Damon Kelly here, now, he knows, because he's leading, that he's guaranteed a medal, whatever. The only thing we don't know is what colour it is. There's a change. Lopez, 215 kilograms. 215 kilograms. This will be for Italy, Detonamo. Well, the bar at 215. First yeah. attempt. So this was the announced entry total for... Ite Detenamo. Kobalatsi's gone up to 216 kilos. Well, what Damo wants to do is make sure that his third attempt is higher than George's first attempt so that if by chance George were to go on to miss the two next lifts, he does have a chance of staying ahead of him on the podium. George lifted 223 last November in the World Championships. And that was his best ever series and best ever stats. So they switched around then. So Kobalatse at 216. And in he comes. Well, this is what I call the moment of truth. Like I said before, this man is so composed all of the time. 
yet he unleashes so much wrath on this bar. This would take him to 387 kilos. A bend on that bar. Pretty straightforward, <laughs> hey? And there is so much bend. You can see it even when the bar drops. It's whipping and rebounding. So 387. Now, just to put this into context, the Commonwealth Games total total record is 397, held by Detonamo. Catches that bar, and there's so much swing happening. He really uses that bend to his advantage as he whips it overhead, and no problems. Damon Kelly's clean and jerk Commonwealth Games record is 221, and that's now under threat. It's very under threat. No question. Most people will be taking more than a five kilo jump from a first set 216. <laughs> 390 for first place. And to re-establish his advantage. <laughs> no worries. If George is tough, if George is strong, Shows so this guy. And he has the advantage of responding to George's changes. He's got the last lift according to the lifting order, so that may really come into play. Look at that swing on the bar. So fast into that perfect overhead catch position. Second attempt. So Ite is being called out at 217, but that's just the one kilogram automatic increment. It's actually Damon Kelly that will be coming out at 217. Yeah. Just interesting about uh, Ite uh, Detonamo. In the Oceanic Championships in May, he cleaned and jerked 223. George Kobalatsi did it in the World Championships. So they're very tight and close together, those two, on the clean and jerk. Now, Damon Kelly, five kilo increase. And this, of course, just takes him up just, I say, just takes him to 379. He's going to need this jerk if he wants any chance of changing his position from third. What a gutsy lift. And look at the coaching staff celebrating. Now they just have to sit back and wait. George just needs to make his le next lift to take that second position once again. So 388 for... Uh, 222 kilograms for George Kovaleza, Canada. So he's gone into silver medal. Now it's all about Kovaleza and Detenamo. So the bar's gone to 222 to try and take away the clean and jerk record that belongs to Damon Kelly from the Delhi Commonwealth Games. So this is would be a six kilo, a six kilo advantage. But in fact, what's happened here is that Detonamo is going to come in and do exactly what George was proposing, but George has gone up to 223. So just trying to take the edge and Detonamo being put in here. So Detonamo actually, this could be this could be very interesting because to take a six kilo advantage at this particular point and go 396, he's getting the kilos on the bar. That just puts a little more pressure on George. So confident about his jerk, isn't he? That clean wasn't easy, but yes, confidence is definitely the theme in that jerk. So he's got a new Commonwealth Games clean and jerk record, but that's irrelevant. Remember, this is the man who has not won this title, who's had bronze and silver. Look at this clean, it really does bury him. 
but he stands up with pure brute strength, knowing he has this jerk in his back pocket. So 396. This is 396 is just one kilo short of the total record. And now Kobaladze trying to to do that. He's really trying to chase the gold medal, David. He could have just put on 218 to try to surpass Dim Kelly for silver, but he's going for 223, securing silver and pushing Ite to lift more. So this is what a four seven kilo increase. Commonwealth record attempt. And what a clean. Well, he clearly made the right choice there. That was no big deal for George. Okay, so he's got so he's got the clean and jerk record. Doesn't really matter a job. What matters now is the fact that this is where Detanamo and George they come down to their last throw of the dice. George, remember, he, he was three kilos down at the halfway stage. Now, the body weight comes into play here as well. Kobalatse, 138 kilos, and Detanamo, much heavier, the heaviest of the class at 162. So now you have to factor that in. But Detanamo has got to realize that he's got to lift that little bit more. He's got a two kilo cushion at the moment. It was three at half time, but now 394 Kobalatse, 396. But take one kilo off because of that extra body weight that the Nauru lifter has. So it is really nip and tuck. He's really putting so, pressure on Ite to make this third lift. Well, they've both gone 228. But there comes a point where you have to be honest and realistic with yourself. But so, you know, George really has the advantage because he's already got a silver. He has nothing left to lose. Trying to push Ite out of his comfort zone is the kind of game that the coaches are going to be playing right now. So just having a look at this is a six kilo increase, 229. He wants George to lift out first. This is the best game of poker we have seen so far happening right before us on the scoreboard. Imagine this as a poker table and, you know, thousand dollar bills going down because that's where we are now. That's right. Raise you. I'll call you. I'll raise you again. That's exactly what this is. And now we've actually got an athlete coming out. No, there's a change. 228. We see the Canadian coach, Guy Marino, at the table. Where's he going to go? Got to go 229. He has gone 229. There comes a point here where they could both run each other into trouble here. But remember, both men in their last major competitions, Cleaninger 223. They're both around that area, but now they are really pushing. And you know, if they both get it wrong and they both fail, Detanamo is going to end up with a gold medal. That's right, it's status quo if neither of these athletes can lift this weight. But we are so lucky as an audience to have the chance to see two athletes, two athletes going for eight kilograms over what the Commonwealth Games record was when we started this competition today. 403 kilos. Detanamo. To go first. No. So he leads, but now it's down to Kobalatse. You know, it wasn't an easy clean on the last lift, but you know, this is something that happens when you play this high six poker. You went up six kilos. Or sorry, seven kilos. And when you just got crushed by a weight and try seven kilos more, it's not easy, David. And this is where the coaches look back and sort of say, well, should we have just put an extra four on and just seen? 
It doesn't and really matter because this man still has the last lift. So the situation is, Ite Tetanama, who has never won the Commonwealth Games gold, he leads by two kilos. But here comes George Kobalatse. And remember, the bar for him has gone up six kilos, so this is for 400. But basically, if the man in your picture lifts it, he is the champion. If he misses, it goes to Nauru. Ite, backstage, watching. Can he clean? What a clean. Okay. Can he jerk? What a jerk. Up to the jury. Three wide lines. Team Canada. And Canada have regained the title. George Kobalatse, a bronze medalist four years ago at the age of 38, has become super heavyweight champion of the Commonwealth. What a lift. That wasn't even that hard. I really wonder what he could have had to do. Like, could, had, could he have done more if he needed to? If Ite would have got that 229, I wonder if he could have gotten three more kilos. Unbelievable confidence in himself and his ability. Have a look at this. Enjoy this. Great clean. Fantastic push overhead there. A lot of shoulder movement, but no question. That was locked out, and that was a good lift. That was a great lift. What a way to finish the Commonwealth Games weightlifting of 2014. And to put his name in the record book, 1978, Jean-Marc Cardinal of Canada, the only man previously for your country, Jeannie, to win this super heavyweight title. And now you've got George Kobalatsi. George Kobalatsi is the man. Yes, he definitely is the man. You know, first time he ever represented Canada was 2009. So these are the clean and jerk contributions to what has been a fabulous battle. And you can see there, Kobalatsi, 229, a, a massive personal best, and really dominated the clean and jerk. So the one table that you're really looking forward to if you're a Canadian is this one. And here it is, Kobalatsi wins it by 400. And you can see clean and jerk and games record there. Detenamo has to settle for silver. And Damon Kelly, he now gets the bronze, having previously won gold and silver. And Jokazade for Wales. What a young man with a future, even though he was on 361. He will come back and he will be a danger over the next, what, four, eight years. It's entirely up to him if his appetite remains for the sport. But George, he's had...